This is Adjuster TV, Adjusters First. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Kaplik. Learn all about E&O and other insurance for adjusters at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. Okay, so what are the benefits of closing claims on site? First things first, I will say when I do videos like this about this particular topic or topics where I talk about making a coverage decision and things like that, um, I find that I, I do get comments from people saying, hey, I've handled this many claims or I've been doing this for this many years and I've never had to write the estimate or I've never had to call and settle up with the homeowner or I've never had to make a coverage decision, right? These days, there are, there's a little bit of a mixture of the kinds of roles that you'll take on as an adjuster, right? But there are still a lot of uh, roles where you are gonna be the person who makes the first contact call, um, makes a coverage decision, right? Um, does the inspection, writes the estimate, and then settles up with the homeowner. You may even write checks, right? There's still companies out there that will have you do the whole thing, right? Uh, um, and some of those companies are some of the biggest companies, some of the biggest insurance companies. Um, if you've never worked for like a state farm or an all state, um, you know, they may be doing it both ways, right? And smaller companies may be, or a t if you work for a TPA, they may be like, hey, just go out there with your phone, take some photos and get a hover, and then we'll take it from there. You don't have to write an estimate. You don't have to make any phone calls or anything. They just, okay, I'm doing this one at four o'clock and just be there at four o'clock and boom, there you are, right? But in a lot of situations, there are um, still full, well, I call it a full-fledged like claims role, right? Where you do, basically everything. Daily claims, this is the way you're gonna mostly do it, right? Cat is a mixed bag, right? It could be either or, um, or both, right? Um, but I, I, if, if I were you, I would wanna have every, as many opportunities open uh, to me as possible, and I would wanna be as, which means that w I would wanna be as marketable as possible as somebody who knows how to do the whole thing all the way through versus just the inspection part or the inspection and the estimate and that's it, right? Or as a desk adjuster, just writing estimates and whatever. I wanna be, you know, to have the most opportunities, I think that a person still needs to know this whole process all the way through from start to finish because there's still plenty of roles out there. And if you wanna work daily, you're gonna have to do the whole enchilada. And it's a lot of getting into the policy and coverages, additional living expense, so on and so forth, right? Um, so, but <laughs> um, there are a bit two basic ways, there's a multiple way of doing this, but there's really two basic ways of uh, closing files, right? If, you, if, you're, if you're gonna be doing full claims, you can either um, scope all day long and then go back to your hotel room or go home or whatever, depending on what you're doing, if it's daily or cat, have dinner, and then stay up until 11 or one o'clock in the morning and write them, right? Which makes sense, right? Because during the day, you're, it's, the sun's out and you, it's, you, know, you can take pictures outside and everything and, and you can just like, you could probably get a lot of scopes done. Um, and then at nighttime, you know, you can't do any inspections and you really can't call anybody after a certain hour. So you might as well use that time to write estimates and, and, and wrap up your files. And you can absolutely do it that way. And if you're brand new, I'm gonna recommend that you do it that way to start, right? But no matter what, I would say if you're brand new or if you're experienced, you're gonna save yourself a lot of time at night by doing at least a couple of things while you're still sitting in front of the house. People say, you know, as soon as you finish your, your inspection, just jump in your car and go around the corner and, and then, you know, do, you know, write an activity diary or do this one thing or that one other one thing, right? I'm gonna tell you to stay in front of the house and the main reason why, two, two main reasons why, right? Is that when you do this, um, I'm gonna have you stay in, sit, sit in front of the house, right? Where you get your scope sheet and you have your photos and you can stick your, your SD card in your laptop, import and label your photos and then fill out the activity diary, right? And, and then check off the site inspected thing in Xactimate. And this does three things for you, right? It, it allows you to get your photos in there while you're still at the house, because if you forget a photo, you're still at the house, right? You can just jump out and be like, you know, oops, I forgot the risk photo, grab the risk photo. Or, oops, I forgot a picture of that fence that I'm paying for in the estimate, you know, go back and get it, right? Um, and then with the activity diary, same deal, right? This is this is gonna basically status your file so that later that afternoon, 
if something comes up or if there's a phone call from the insured or the contractor or somebody and they call your manager, right, your manager is going to look in the file and see that you were already at the house and this is what you found and this is where the status of the file is and he can pass that along to whoever calls, right? Because they may not call you, they may call your manager. You want to give your manager as much ammo as possible in any claim situation, right? And that means keeping your files as up to date as possible, right? So important label your photos, right? Which helps you. Uh, and then uh, update your activity diary and then check off that thing in Xactimate that says site inspected, inspection, and whatever, right? Because then that stops the clock on your cycle time metric uh, for your contacted to inspected, right? And it starts the clock on your inspected to closed metric, right? So I want to have all those things done when they're done, right? Not waiting till midnight or the next day or two days later or whatever to do that stuff. I want to do it right there at the house. The other thing that this does for you, especially if the homeowner is home, is that you know when you walked up to the front of the house, and I asked this on my first phone call, I ask it when I'm after I knock on the door and I'm talking to the homeowner just to double check, right? Um, hey, I know I asked this already before, but I uh, just wanted to double check to see if you guys had seen anything, um, any water spots on the ceiling upstairs, or you know any other damage, any other personal property, or whatever around the house that you guys have noticed since we last talked. Nope. Okay, great. The number of times that the homeowners come out, I've, I've gone and sat down. I'm, you know, I'll go to the door after I'm done with the inspection and be like, okay, I'm done with everything. I'm just gonna go out in the truck and, and write this up. Um, give me a few minutes and I'll come back and whatever. That's what I say. If you're, if you're not gonna be writing this up, right, at, at the house, if you're not writing the estimate and closing the file, then you would you would you you wanna let the homeowner know that you're done and that you're leaving, right? So that they're not like, I wonder if that guy's still here climbing on my roof, right? And then they, you know, can I let the dog back out in the backyard? So I'm always gonna touch base with the homeowner before I do the next step, right? So whether that's going back to the truck and writing it up or it's just leaving, right? But if I'm sitting in front of the house and I'm putting importing and labeling the photos, uh, maybe I forgot a photo, jump out and grab it. Uh, maybe I see something in the fo my photos. I'm like, ooh, I didn't even look at that. Run back out with my tape measure and my clipboard. That's got damage too. And I'm gonna add that to my estimate later, now or whenever, right? Um, doing the diary and then checking that box. The homeowner comes out. This happens like a lot, right? And they come over and they tap on the window. Hey, you know, I we you know you asked us if there was any damage to the inside and we didn't think there was any, but actually my wife uh, was looking upstairs and she found a water spot on the ceiling in, in our kids, uh, the, in the, cl the closet upstairs in their, the kid's bedroom, right? Great, grab my camera, put the SD card in, don't forget that, right? Because you will. And then run back inside, get your photos, get your measurements, add that to your scope sheet, right? And then now you're not playing phone tag with the homeowner later saying, or a text tag or whatever it is, right? Hey, we found something, can you come back out and look at it, right? Maybe you could take, let, have them take photos and it kind of shortcuts that, but it might be something bigger, right? It might be something that you have to go back out and look at. Um, did you look at the gazebo in the back? We actually have, there's some woods back there and if you go through the woods, then there's a gazebo. Did you look at that? I didn't even know that was there, right? And now you're driving all the way back to that house to go look at it. Um, I want to have give the uh, homeowner every opportunity to come over and tap on the window and ask me questions or say, hey, we, we actually found something. So I can get that done while I'm still at the house, right? I don't want to go back to the house. I don't want to play phone tag with this person because like I always say, anytime that you're deviating from your normal little claims process and you have to add phone calls and reinspections and things like that, it just like exponentially like it compounds the amount of time that you spend on one claim and it reduces the time that you have to close other claims, right? We get paid by the claim. So why would we wanna waste time doing a whole bunch of extra stuff on a claim that if we only just sat there for an extra 15 minutes in front of the insurance house, maybe 20 minutes, and just filled this, these things out, uh, that would have solved that, right? It is not always, there's still gonna be phone calls later, but this, this does have a, a major impact on your time, right? I will personally go, and I did for pretty much my entire career, um, because I was, that's how I was taught to do it to start. And I was like, this this seems like the, the best way. And I tried it both ways, right? I tried it, scope all day, right, all night. And I like to go to sleep, right? I don't know about you, but I'm, I, I value sleep. Um, I tried it that way, um, and then, but I was trained to do it where I write it up at, while I'm still at the house, right? And it got, to, it got me so focused on the claims process and writing the estimate and being good at the estimate, writing the estimate and everything that I was able to really, really build up a, a lot of speed and then not have to do a whole lot at night. Maybe make a few phone calls, a couple corrections. Maybe there was one, a straggler or whatever that I couldn't close on site, which was rare. 
I want to write that one up that night or first thing in the morning the next morning. Um, that allowed me to stay on cat a lot longer because I'm not staying, I'm not getting two hours of sleep a night. I'm getting seven and a half, right? Or eight hours of sleep. And I'm not rushed. I'm not stressed. I'm just, you know, I, I can go, I don't have, you know, the other benefits of this, which is, I think one of my favorite things, and I think it's even a bigger time saver because people will be like, well, you know, you're actually wasting time because you're spending more time at each house. And so you can't go to as many houses during the day. True, right? But if the homeowner's there, which I always tried to make sure that they were there, if not, I'm going to call them as soon as I'm done with everything. Hey, listen, I just got done looking at your house, uh, found some hail damage to the roof and the gutters and two sides and fence and whatever. Um, the grand total's this, your deductible's that, first payment's this, your mortgage company's this, um, your contractor is here, he and I are thumbs up and you know nodding yes, everything, we're good to go. Uh, you expect your first check in the mail in a week, right? The carriers want you to do this from since the beginning of time and I to, all the way today. I guarantee you, anybody you ask you to carry will say, well, that's the ideal, but nobody does it. So we just suffer, right? The homeowner loves it because they're like, oh, okay, great. I have the answer. I'm going to get the first check. And then I've got in my spiel, you know, well, here's what happens. If it looks like you need to pay more, you find more damage. These are the steps, right? You're, you're they, they're, they're locked in with all the expectations and information that they need to be feel comfortable with the process and moving on to the next step, right? While I'm still at the house, if I scope a whole bunch and then stay up all night writing, at some point, right, I'm gonna have to sit down and call every single one of those people if I'm doing full claims, full-fledged claims, right? If I scoped six and I wrote up five, that night, then I'm gonna to have to peel off at least 15 minutes per phone call the next day, because you gotta do it as soon as possible to call all those people. Then we've got phone tag, right? Then we've got, well, it's not gonna be a 15 minute conversation or an eight minute conversation. It's gonna be a 40 minute conversation because the homeowner had a whole bunch more questions and there's more stuff that you, you know, well, you didn't, you know, you mentioned all these other things, but you didn't mention the other thing that I was really, really concerned about, and that was the swimming pool cover or the whatever, right? And you didn't, you could have done all that stuff while you're at the house, not, you know, playing phone tag about it and then having that all drag out. I don't like to talk on the phone. I just don't. I apologize. I'm sorry, not sorry. I don't like talking on the phone. Um, so I don't, I want to try to limit phone work as much as possible. And it's not that I don't like to like talk to people. It's that I just, it just takes time, especially when I'm working, to deal with phone calls and do inspections and write estimates, right? So I built my workflow around limiting the phone uh, stuff as much as possible and trying to get everything done and getting the homeowner kicked off to the next step and everything, get the, get some money in their hands um, and answering their questions uh, so they don't have to deal with like a whole bunch of voicemails and a whole bunch of phone tag and a whole bunch of all that kind of stuff, right? I don't care what AI, voicemail, texts, email, whatever, you still have to, you still have to talk on the phone. You still have to communicate with people. And so limiting that by being a lot more efficient about it, I, I feel is personally made the job easier and more enjoyable. And I think it made it easier for me to go day after day after day after day after day, take a half day off, take a whole day off, day after day after day after day, and just keep just for the whole summer, right? Nonstop. And by the end of the summer, um, you know, I'm tired, right? I'm a little bit worn out, but I'm not totally burned out like everybody else is because I was actually getting sleep and, I'm, and I, I built the work so that it was easier to do and easier for me to close a lot of claims. I, I personally was handling between six and 700 and maybe 1200 claims a year, which is a lot, right? As a cat adjuster, especially in, even in years where there just wasn't a whole lot going on, there was zero hurricanes, 900 claims, right? Uh, and I was able to do that pretty much exclusively by closing claims on site. Certainly there are guys out there and gals that will scope all day and write all night or scope scope for two or three days in a row and then stay in their hotel room for two days and write them up and and still do this, the same number of claims, but they're not, there aren't many, right? And I, I 
because of the, the final piece, which is the quality of your file and technical accuracy. Remember in the beginning, I was like, well, you're taking pictures, you're importing a label of your photos, and you made it see that, that you, didn't, you don't have any photos of the left side of the house. And you're like, I didn't even look at it because there was a, a briar bush on one side, and then the homeowner asked me a question, and I forgot about it. They didn't go back over to look at it. And you go over and look at it, and that side's damaged too, right? You left a bunch of money on the table, and you created a reinspection, right, if you didn't see that, right, and just left. Later on, somebody's gonna find it at some point, right? Hey, did you look at the left side of the house? I only see on your estimate here, madam, looking at it, you know, and uh, I don't see that, right? And this is a week and a half later. <laughs> I don't see the left side of the house. Well, if you had just, you know, been done these things while you're at the house the first time, then you wouldn't have to go back out and do it. So I, I personally feel like my technical accuracy, when my files get QA'd, they catch fewer mistakes because I'm there to sort of like QA, QA my own work while I'm still there, right? I'm writing the estimate, I'm like, ah, shoot, how many events, I didn't even write down how many events were on the thing. My wife called or the, you know, something happened, I said drone flew over and I don't know what that was all about. It, it distracted me for a second, I forgot to count the events, right? Whatever, it doesn't, it, it could be anything, right? Now I'm, st I'm sitting at the house, still, I don't have a photo of that back slope. Right, that has all the vents on it. My ladder's still set up on the house but until I'm ready to leave, right? Climb up there, photo, there's 12 vents, right? Not a huge number, but that's still gonna really have an effect on your quality, that, that especially when QA goes up back out and looks at it, right? I'm QAing my own work by just writing them up at the house and having the house there to be as a, as a reference while I'm doing, while I'm putting the file together. Um, you know, I still, I, I was still able to close as many claims a day as the heavy hitters who went out there and scoped and then tried to write them up at night. I promise you, there are very few people that will scope 10 claims a day and then write 10 up that night, right? Unless they've got like a super efficient process or they have somebody else doing stuff for them. I did my all my own claims except for like the admin part and some of the phone call stuff um, variously through my career. Other times I just did everything and I didn't have to stay up all night long, and I was, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure when it was all said and done, we ended up in basically the same place as far as like the volume of claims, right? But my claims were better, right? I was, I had a reputation for having a good quality claim and being fast, which is uh, not the conventional wisdom about adjusters, right? The, 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 the conventional wisdom says that if you run and gun and if you're fast, that your quality, you're gonna have terrible claims, you're gonna have terrible customer service. And I had great claims, great customer service, and I was fast. And I believe it was because I closed them on site. Did you know that this is just a clip of a much longer video? To watch the whole show and for a chance to have your questions answered by me, become a member at adjustertvplus.com.